Hey, how you going? It's Helen here from HelenMartinOnline.com. Hope you're really well. I'm here to talk to you today about the Facebook algorithm. I was going to bring this to you last week, but I got whisked away for my birthday, so it didn't quite happen. So as promised, I'm here to talk about the Facebook algorithm and things that you need to be aware of with um, your content, your content creation and um, you know engagement and things like that. So you can make the most out of Facebook's algorithm and let it work to your advantage rather than disadvantage. So there's some things that you need to be aware of in re relation to the algorithm. Hey Rob, how are you? Thank you for joining me live. So the Facebook algorithm changes all the time. It actually changes probably a lot more often than what you're aware of. So we only really hear about the big ones, the big changes that makes everybody really nervous and it's like, um, you know, Facebook's cutting down all organic reach and you're gonna have to pay to play and everybody really panics and um, you know, everybody goes crazy about those kind of um, updates. But the Facebook algorithm is actually changing pretty much on a weekly basis. So as long as my message here with the Facebook algorithm is as long as you are consistent and you're aware of the things that I'm about to share with you in relation to the Facebook algorithm, then you can, uh, you won't be affected as much as you think you might be when the algorithm changes in a big way. So I'm going to go through a list of things today that you need to be aware of, particularly for organic reach. What you would like to achieve on social media is that Facebook sends your content out to anybody and everybody that likes your page and that's following you on a business page and then you get maximum organic reach. If you can do that, then you don't have to pay to play and you can get maximum exposure, which builds your likability, which builds your authority, which builds your, builds your um, you know, posture and credibility online. And when you get that, that's when you get leads. That's when you get people that know, like, and trust you. And when you get leads and you get followers, that's when you make more sales. So it's really important to understand. So the little quirks of Facebook and little things that you can do to work with the Facebook algorithm. So if you are joining me live, please say hello. Tell me where you're coming in from. If you're watching the replay later, then just put the word replay down below so I can go and say hello to you later. Um, and send me some likes and loves if you can hear me and see me okay, just to know that everything's ready to rock and roll. So let's get on to um, the Facebook algorithm at the moment. There's been some changes and subtle changes, but they're important changes. And there's sort of three main components that make up the Facebook algorithm. And those three main components are called ISP. Thank you for the likes and loves, which stands for inventory, signals, and prediction. So I'm going to go through these. And the really important ones here is really about, um, you know, this, the signals. Um, just before I get onto the content, if anyone here is absolutely new to me and a Facebook Live, put the number one down below so I can give you a special shout out and I say, um, you know, hello to you. And predominantly what I do is help home-based business owners bring their business online. So talk about this social media, um, you know, marketing and branding and lead generation. How do you find leads online? How to bring your business online, market online, build a beautiful brand so you can get leads and sales into your business. So just put a number one down below if you're new to me. So let's go back to ISP. So that's inventory, signals, and prediction. So as it sort of indicates, inventory is really about the past. Signals is what's going on. And prediction is what's going to sort of happen in the future and the organic reach that they're going to, you know, have in mind for you. So make no mistake, Facebook knows everything about everyone and every time you click, on something, something you like, something you do, you know, engagement that you do, it's all tracked. So things that you've done in the past will actually, you know, have a prediction on your organic reach in the future. So, you know, and I'll, I'll get to this and, and how powerful this is for you, but basically if you want, you know, in a nutshell, if you want more exposure organically, from Facebook, then you need to be really active yourself 
on Facebook. So you need to be engaging with other people. You need to be liking and commenting and sharing and, you know, doing, being quite active on Facebook if you want, you know, Facebook to recognize you as somebody that is worthy of sending out, you know, content organically to other people. So you get back what you give. So it's really important to be active yourself. So not just setting up a self-branded Facebook page and just pushing content out there, actually being... Um, you know, active and engaging yourself with other people and people that follow your page, you know, etc. So the inventory side of it, I've just got some notes here because when I get to the signals part, there's actually, it won't take long, but there are nine signals that you need to be aware of. So I'll just run through them quickly. But the ISP stands for in Inventory Signals and Prediction. And this sort of makes up, um, you know, how the fa Facebook algorithm works for you and what kind of um, exposure you're going to get organically from your content in the future. So obviously in inventory sort of refers to what um, what's happened in the past. So how that's measured by Facebook is your content that you put on Facebook, what's happened to it? So when you put something out there, are people engaging with it? Do people like it? Are people sharing it? Are people commenting it? Are people sending, you know, likes and loves around it? Um, you know, what's happening to that content once it's posted? So if you post something on social media, on, you know, your Facebook page, your business Facebook page, and, it, and nothing happens to it. So nobody engages with it. No one likes it. No one loves it. No one shares it. No one, you know, makes any sort of comment to it or engages with it. Then that's basically telling Facebook, hmm, People aren't really interested in Helen's content. So it, it makes an impact on Facebook algorithm as to what happens to your content once it's posted. So this is really where it's really, really critical when we get to the when I get to the nine signals that I'll go through is to really maximize engagement, get people to like and love and comment and engage on your content. Because if your content just sits there and no one engages with it, likes it, comments on it, shares it, etc., that's making an impression on the Facebook algorithm, but the people that aren't really engaging with your content. Hey, Glenn, how are you? Nice to talk to you earlier and good to see you on live. Um, so it's, it's really important to be aware of what, your con your, what content you're putting on your page and what's happening to it once it's there. And be very aware if you're posting, 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 and no one's you know, liking, sharing, commenting, doing anything with that content, then it's going to hurt your fa Facebook algorithm moving forward, particularly in the prediction stage of ISP, Inventory Signals and Prediction. So your previous track record with what you're posting and what people are engaging with is really important. So how you change that and how you boost that up will get to the signals. So when I get to the nine signals, take sort of mental note of what you can do to improve your engagement and things like that so that the inventory side of the Facebook algorithm for you is really good, okay? Now, if you are starting online new, so let's say you've been building your business the traditional way and you've just started a new sort of Facebook page on, um, uh, you know, like a business page and you're self-branding yourself and no one's really there yet, no one's really to engage yet, then please don't worry too much about that inventory component of the algorithm because there's no one there yet to engage with. So what's really important when you're starting out is to learn to ask for the engagement, learn to do Facebook Lives and prompt engagement. So any opportunity that you get through the nine signals that I'll talk about in a moment to increase your engagement, increase your visibility, increase um, you know, your likability on your Facebook page, you really want to strive for that to make sure moving forward when you've got more viewers, when you've got more followers, when you've got more likes on your page and you're truly building your business online, that the inventory component of the Facebook algorithm is working in your favor. So the last thing you wanna do is sit there for months and no one's engaging with you. So from the inventory component of this Facebook algorithm, that's not gonna work well for you. So don't stress 
if you don't have many people on your page, many people following you, so I'm talking about a business Facebook page or a self-branded Facebook page, um, then um, you know that's something that you want to work towards. You need to be aware of these com three components of the Facebook algorithm so you can maximize them to get um, you know the the maximum organic reach that you can in the future. So just something to be aware of that what's happened in the past is still relevant to the Facebook algorithm. My hair sticking up there. What's going on, Helen? I'm a bit feral there. Anyway. Um, so let's move on. Is this making sense so far um, as to how sort of content in the past still makes a, a difference to your Facebook algorithm moving forward? Cool. Thanks for the likes and loves. Appreciate that. So let's get on to the signals. These are the nine signals that Facebook... So you know, things are firing off, things are happening within the Facebook algorithm and they can be positive or they can be negative. Thanks for the feedback, Lem. So you want to fire off the Facebook algorithm for you in a positive way. So these nine signals, hey, Christina, how are you? Lovely to see you live. These um, signals, you want them to be firing off all the time in a positive way. If they're not firing off and you're getting negative sort of um, feedback, and I'll go into what positive and negative um, signals mean in a moment, um, but you want to be firing on all cylinders. So moving forward, your organic reach on Facebook is the maximum it can be. When that happens, you can grow your following faster. You can grow your engagement faster faster. Hey Anita, how are you? Lovely to see you on live. Um, so and that's what you want. You want your, um, I'm awesome, thank you Christina, I appreciate you asking. Um, you want your organic reach to be the best it possibly can because that's when you're going to grow your following faster. That's when if you've got a self-branded Facebook page um, that, and you're getting likes and followers, you don't want that to trickle you want that to be growing sort of faster and faster. And the more that you work on these nine signals and get them working in your favor, you'll be able to grow your following faster. Would that, be, would that not be good? Is that not what you want to achieve? So put the word yes down below if you want to grow your business faster on social media. I mean, one of the reasons why we go on social media to build our business is because the leverage you get in that you can reach pre-qualified prospects um, you know, to, that are already putting that ha up their hand saying, yes, I'm interested in what you've got to offer and you can start talking to that person. That is so much easier than in the home-based business, walking around wondering, oh, I wonder if I should talk to them about my business. I wonder if they'd be interested in my product or my business or oh, how do I approach that person? Or oh, I wonder what they're going to think. I wonder what I'm going to say. And you're walking around with this lemon sign on your head that's, um, you know, basically saying, I want you in my business, I want you to buy my products. And it's all really awkward and you have awkward conversations. But, you, the, but at the end of the day, you've got no idea, belly to belly, person to person, whether that person is interested in what you've got. Now, when you build your business online and you do it properly through attraction marketing strategies, well, if you don't know anything about attraction marketing, if that's a new term to you in relation to building your business online, um, put the word training down below so I can send you some free training on attraction marketing because it's really important when you build a business online through social media that you don't push your products or business out on people, that you actually learn to attract people to you through attraction marketing. You know, in the home-based business, we talk about network marketing. Everybody concentrates on networking. So the, the word prospecting and networking, it's a common term that everybody talks about. And where do you find more people to connect with? Where do you find more people to prospect? But what about the marketing part of network marketing? No one talks about it. No one really knows how to do it. And people think, oh, I'm going to build my business on through Facebook. Like it's so much easier. I don't want to talk to my family and any friends anymore anymore. I'll go on Facebook and build my business that way. But unless you know about tr attraction marketing, how to really market your business properly on social media, you will kill it before you've even started. You will turn everybody off and every, every, all the mistakes that you're making in traditional network marketing, you'll end up doing them online through Facebook. So please, 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 if you don't know much about attraction marketing, put the word training down below so I can send you some free training and you can start to get a better awareness of what attraction marketing and the whole marketing piece of network marketing is all about. So back to sort of Facebook, you um, 
where the hell was I? I've just gone on a tangent and completely lost my track because I've gone there, then I've gone there, then I've gone there, and I've forgotten what I was going to say. So oh, it'll come back to me. It always comes back to me. It's really bizarre. So I'll remember what I was going to say in a second, but let me move on to the nine signals because what you really want to be aware of is the things that you do on Facebook. You love my accent. <laughs> Thanks, Anita. Um, the, the things that you do, the actions that you take or you don't take on Facebook is going to make a massive difference to the algorithm for you moving forward, okay? So let me run through these nine signals. If you've just jumped on, um, what we're talking about here is ISP. So they're the, the sort of the three things that you want to be aware of in relation to the Facebook algorithm. So it's inventory is I, signals is S, and P is prediction. And all those three Three headings there make a big difference to how Facebook sends out your content in the future. So you want to maximize all these three areas so Facebook sees you as somebody that's active on social media, you've got valuable content on social media, people like you, they love your content, they're engaging with you, they're interacting with you, so then their prediction for you in the future is to send it out to more people. That's what we're trying to achieve here. So what are the signals that you need to be aware of? Number one, the average time spent on your content. So give, let me give you an example of that. You do a Facebook Live. So what Facebook is measuring is how many people are watching your content and how long for. So let's, you do, let's say you do a Facebook Live and you go for 20 minutes, but it's tra everything's tracked. Um, everything they know everything about everyone and what they're doing and how long they're watching things for and what they're engaging with and what they're not and let's say out of that 20 minute Facebook live only a few people just a few not even on the replay watch two minutes of it so what's being tracked there with one of these signals is how long are people engaging with your content so let's do you say you do a Facebook Live and it's for 15 minutes and majority of the people that were on live stayed on between 10 and 15 minutes. Then to the that signal to Facebook is that okay when Helen does a Facebook Live, her content is quite valuable to her target market, so we'll send that out to more people because it's congruent with her page. So do you see do you get do you understand what I'm sort of saying regarding the number one signal is the length of time people are engaging with your content. So let's say you put something on your page and it's got a link to it. So when people are scrolling through Facebook, you've written a powerful story and that story has got a link to it. So Facebook can tell whether people are going scroll, 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 scroll and stop. So let's say that you've written something powerful on your Facebook page and it's a little bit of a story and there's a link to it. So Facebook know the difference between Somebody going, I don't want to read the story, what's the, what's the link, and they click on it. They know that there is a not enough time for somebody to go scroll to the bottom and not read the story. So that actually works against you. Whereas if you've got a powerful little story about, you know, maybe it's um, a product that's worked really well for you or your story with network marketing and now you're building it online and the difference that that's made to you. Like it's an intriguing, embracing in story for people to read. Facebook knows how long it takes for somebody to read a post like that and then click on the link. So if people are reading your content and then getting to the link and clicking through, awesome for, the, for that signal because it's showing that people are engaging with your own content and they're, they're staying for the length of time that it would take to read that post. So the, I guess the, the important thing there is that you need to have engaging content that people are going to be interested in to stay on it and cl definitely click through to a link. So let's say you put a post and it's got a link through to something, something more that they can get more information, a blog post, a freebie, an ebook, uh, you know, something like that. And people just scroll through that and no one clicks on that link and no one engages with your posts then that signal doesn't get fired for Facebook. It's like, oh, whatever Helen's posting, people are not reading it and they're not clicking through on it. So all those things, so that number one is the average time spent on your content. So this is how valuable your content is and um, putting some thought to um, you know, your content creation and whether that content is congruent with your target market. So you can't 
um, be really valuable to anybody and everybody. You need to know who it is that you are serving, who are your target market and bring them valuable information. When you bring them valuable information, they'll engage with your content. That's one of the signals that Facebook tracks. And so they'll send more of your content out to more people. Okay, number two, sharing sort of content into Messenger. So if you can get from your Facebook page into somebody's Messenger, that is a really good signal for your Facebook algorithm because it's showing now a personal connection. So somebody's engaged with you on your page and now you've got to the point where you're engaging in Messenger and Facebook, I can, Facebook goes, that's good. Because you know Facebook, all Facebook cares about is the user experience. Now when people connect and engage and like and love and put comments in and then end up in Messenger, that's the ultimate sort of goal because you're connecting with individuals. They don't want spam. They don't want people to see stuff they don't want to see. So when somebody sees something they like and that they end up, um, you know, engaging enough to end up in a personal connection with Messenger because that's what it is. You're personally connecting one-on-one -on -one now and Facebook got you to that point. That's an awesome signal for Facebook to know Helen's giving out great content. Now they're talking personally. So they, they want to. That's an engaging you know um, activity. So connecting people ultimately through Messenger from your Facebook platform is an awesome signal to fire for your Facebook algorithm. So encourage people to connect with you personally. You know, writing that powerful story and saying, you know, if this resonates with you, if you'd like to, um, you'd like more information, then PM me. Or if you're on a business Facebook page, you've got a big blue button up the top that says message me. Direct people to your messenger and get them to, you know, connect with you personally. The one thing, the biggest thing I've learned about building my business online is, yes, I can automate systems. Yes, I can reach thousands and thousands and thousands of more people online, overseas, through the big wide world web that I can't do here in the town behind me that you can see. Like it just opens up opportunities. But you can't rely on that to get leads and to get sales. You still need to connect with people through Messenger, through Zoom, through whatever, and talk to people. Like I actually want to talk to people and help them. Um, yes, I've got automated funnels. So people can click on a link, put their email address, get some training, and then I may not ever talk to them again. I don't want that. I actually want to talk to people. The, the, the downfall of the online world is people are so skeptical. People think every, you know, you, you want something out of them all the time. And I offer, I offer anybody and everybody that I'll chat to them and I'll give them a three 30 minute sort of strategy call. It's cool. No obligation. I just want to guide people in the right direction. Do you know how many people I offer that to and they don't take it up? You know why? Because they think I'm going to sell them something. They think there's a catch to it. They genuinely, people genuinely think that there's some kind of catch behind everything online. But what I've learned is that even though I have automated systems and people can become my leads and buy stuff from me automatically, my most success has been when I help people personally because I actually care about seeing people succeed. There are a lot of people online that don't really care and they just, all they want is the sale. Please don't get caught with those kind of sales funnels because um, you know, you can waste a lot of money and time on the internet and I certainly have. It's taken me a long time to get where I am today to learn the system that now works for me, um, you know, and that's called the attraction marketing formula. So not only the training, so I said before, if you know nothing about attraction marketing, let me send you some free training on attraction marketing. So just put the word training down below. If you're sick of opting in to more free training and you actually want a formula that you can follow and I'll teach you how to do that in my private Facebook group, then put the word down below, what should we put? Formula, just put the word formula. Now I'll be upfront with you. There's a little ebook that explains the formula and it's a few dollars. It's not much, 
but it's a it's it's a small investment so um, you know if you see that you put the word formula down below and I send you the link to an ebook it is a few dollars but if you truly want to learn how to build your business online the right way and then get into my fa private Facebook group for free and I'll teach you how to do that completely for free and give you hours and hours and hours of my time then you know put the word formula down below and I'm happy to help you if you're willing to help yourself then I'm willing to help you um, give me your money that's all they want yeah and there's plenty of those people online and that's unfortunate for the ones of us that genuinely do care and want to help you so let's move on so number two was all about messenger number three multiple replies um, you know multiple replies to a comment so let's say you do a Facebook live and you're getting lots of comments let's say you do a post and you you and somebody comments and you say thank you so that's just one reply if you have the ability to ask a question of somebody that's made a comment and you get multiple replies or you do a post and then heaps of people engage with it then that fires off another signal because it's like oh heaps of people who are reacting with Helen's post so multiple comments if you, you if you do a post and you ask a question or somebody makes a comment and then you ask a question and that triggers other people to reply so multiple comments to your posts will actually fire another signal so that's a really good thing so anywhere you can increase that engagement increase those comments um, you know that that's a really good thing hey Angela how are you okay Helen I'm going to make time good to hear Angela okay number four overall engagement no-brainer I've talked about this over and over and get again engagement is your number one key thing to strive for in social media if no one's engaging with you if they're not liking, they're not loving, they're not commenting, they're not engaging, then you're wasting your time because, well, you may not be wasting your time. And initially, I don't want newbies to be scared of um, when you first go online, you learn about attraction marketing, you realize the difference between branding yourself online rather than pushing your products and business out on your personal Facebook page, which I would not recommend you do. So you learn about attraction marketing, you go online and no one's there. So you've got to start from somewhere. I started from somewhere with no one there. I was doing Facebook lives. No one's there. No one's commenting. You've all got to start from somewhere. So when I talk about these signals and engagement, then, you know, if you're brand new to building your business online, please, you know, measure your level of expectation with the amount of people that are on your page or where you're at in your journey. Math problems are great for engagement. Math problems. Oh, okay, I see the type of post for, for sort of getting engagement. Yes and no, because they get engagement, that, but that also can lead to um, what they call engagement baiting. So um, this was a big one a few months ago when they introduced this thing called they, they just outrule engagement baiting. So what I mean by that is if you're, you want engagement, but you want legitimate engagement with the value that you're bringing to your target market. So engagement baiting is just engagement for the sake of engagement, but it's not really got any value to do with what your page is about. So things like math problems, they are good for engagement, but you do need to be wary of them in relation to if it's just a post to get engagement then it could be considered engagement baiting. So it's just, you want a reaction for the sake of a reaction. You want a comment for the sake of a comment, but it's really got nothing to do with what your page is about. If you do that over and over and over again on your Facebook page, it will hurt you because it's not valuable content that's relative to your target market. It's not congruent with what your page is there for. It's just considered engagement baiting. So every now and again, okay, but um, not all the time because it'll actually hurt these signals that I'm talking about. So thank you for actually raising that, Anita, because it allowed me to sort of explain where it's good and where it's not, and that's valuable for everyone. So thank you for that. Um, so engagement is what you want when you're doing a Facebook live ask for likes and loves ask for people to comment ask a question you know does this make sense to you if it does put the word X down below you know you ask for that engagement so um, you always want to maximize engagement at every stage and that's a really important signal for your Facebook algorithm so moving on when are you posting 
Now, I've just got an alert. Last time I did this, I completely lost the page. Oh, I did it. Good. You're still there. Um, so the time that you're posting. So watch. Are you aware of when people are on your page? You've got a section in, if you've got a business page, in your page that's called Insights. And you can see when people are on your page the most time. So go into your audience insights. It's all there for you to look at and work out when people are on your page the most. What are the popular times of day that people are looking at your page? Post then. Have some awareness of when your target market are looking at your content. So if you put a post now and you, you gauge that over time, you won't know that straight away when you're first starting out, but you get engage, you gauge that over time and then look at your audience insights and work out when people are most on your page. That's when you want to do a Facebook live. That's when you want to post. Work out is it early morning and late in evening that you put your positive quotes up that most people engage with. That's my strategy. So early in the morning and late at night, I've worked out in my time zone in Australia, I get most interaction from people around the world. I've got an internet business. I connect with people all around the world. I don't just concentrate on Australia. In fact, I actually concentrate more out of Australia. That's where majority of my audience is and I'm completely cool with that. But I have to be very aware of in their time zone, when are they engaging with me the most, okay? So um, when you post your content, so think of it like this. You post something and just watch and be aware of this. You post something at a particular time of day and you know. So I know in my time zone in Australia, even in Australia and overseas, it's not worth me jumping on social media between about 3 o'clock in the afternoon and 6, 6 7 o'clock at night here. Nobody's there. Nobody engages with my posts. If I did a Facebook Live, no one would be watching. I mean, you don't really do a Facebook Live for the live viewers. It's mainly the replays that people catch anyway. So you don't really have to worry about that. But when you can maximize live viewers, then you want to do that. So be very aware of when you're posting content because if your content sits there for hours with no engagement because you're not posting at the right time for your target market, it's sudden, Facebook's not suddenly going to go five hours later Oh, now they're engaging with the content. Now we'll start pushing it out. When you put posts on Facebook, you want interaction straight away. And that's when Facebook goes, okay, this is popular. People are engaging with this. Let's send it out, you know, more. So the longer that you have content sitting on your page that no one engages with, that's going to be a negative signal for Facebook. You want stuff posted at a time that you know people are watching to maximize the likes, the loves, the engagement, the replies, the multiple replies, the multiple engagement, and then it gets pushed out quicker further. Does that make sense? Can you just put the word down sense <laughs> down below if this is making sense to you? It's really important to me that I'm explaining this to you in a way that you're understanding what I mean. Um, okay, number six, post type. What do you, thank you, Glenn, for your feedback. Um, post type. So what, what are you actually posting? Are you posting videos? Are you doing Facebook Lives? Are you doing story ads? Thanks, Anita. Are you sharing, you know, content? Is it just images? Is it just positive quotes? Thanks, Christina. Um, thanks, Rob. Um, so what, what content are you posting? Now, I'll give you a bit of a tip. The, the kind of content that resonates with people that most and gets most engagement, Facebook Lives. If you're scared of them, get over it. <laughs> Just push the live button, do a bit of a practice. Um, you know, I was talking to Glenn this morning. He has problems with um, internet where he's traveling around at the moment. So just do a video and upload it. When you do, you know, have internet to upload, do what you need to do to get on video. You really want to do Facebook Live though because it's Facebook's own video platform. So Facebook Live versus an uploaded video, you're going to get far more reach and organic exposure from Facebook doing a Facebook Live rather than an uploaded video. So do what you need to do to get the job done, but um, start practicing Facebook Live. That's the best way that you're going to get um, you know, most engagement and the post type. So Facebook Lives is a winner. That's where you're going to get it, you know, spread out more. As long as, you know, you've got a good message, you've got value going out to your target market, it's got to be congruent with who's on your page. And make no mistake, Facebook knows why you're there, how you've branded yourself, 
what you're talking about and whether your audience is engaging with you or not. So make it valuable content, ask for engagement and you know make that Facebook algorithm signal fire off constantly. That's a good Facebook Live. People are engaging with Helen. They like her content. We'll send it out to more people. So really critically important. Um, something that I'd also say there with post type is if you um, share content, so that's a post type. So it could be an image, could be a video, you could be sharing content. So when you share content, put some wording at the top of it. So even my quotes, I don't, on oh, one of my pages I do, but this page, when I put up a quote, I just don't post the quote. I put a couple of sentences up the top. So put some effort into when you share something, why are you sharing it? So that's shared content, but even posts, like make sure there's some sort of wording up there and make it engaging for people or give them a reason to like it or comment or ask a question. So your post type will also, you know, signal fire off, um, you know, the algorithm. And my biggest tip to you with that is do a variety. Don't do the same thing over again. It gets boring. Your audience will be bored. The signal won't fire off because it's just the same thing over and over again. So do Facebook Lives. Put up positive quotes. Put up engaging, um, you know, con still there. Sorry, I just had a phone call. Um, you know, tell stories. Be authentic. You know, be really real. Um, you know, I've got alerts going everywhere. Sorry. Okay, they're gone. Um, you know, be really real and authentic. If you've got a powerful story, tell it. That's what people engage with. So do a variety of content. Okay, number seven. We're almost there. Liking versus loving. And commenting versus not commenting. If you can, when you're asking for engagement, ask people to love content rather than like it. Like it now is just a standard action on Facebook. It doesn't fire off the signal for your algorithm as much as if people love your content. So that's where you'll, you'll hear me say, send some likes and loves. I'll always sort of add that in, likes and loves. So you want people to press the love button more than the like button and that'll fit, fire off the signal more for your Facebook algorithm that it will the like button. So ask for loves more than likes and comment versus non-comment. So many people scroll through Facebook and just watch. They never interact, they never comment, they sit on Facebook Lives and say nothing, they never push the like or the love button and, you know, I do that myself. I, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, somebody that does that sometimes as well. But what you really want to achieve for that signal to fire is that people are not only liking your content but they're loving it. Um, so ask for the love and ask for comments. So you don't want people sitting on your Facebook page and not commenting. You really want to get people to comment. So encourage people to comment so you can engage with them and start a conversation. And even if you can end up in Messenger at the end of it, then even better. Okay, so you really want um, loves versus likes. You still want likes, but better to get loves. And you want to, people to comment rather than just watch. Obviously, that fires off the signal in a big way. So... Um, you know, and if you look at numbers, let's say you've got, it's not just likes for the sake of like. So if you've got 5,000 people on your page and five people like something versus you've got 100 people on your page and five people like something, which do you think is more powerful with the Facebook algorithm? The 5,000 or the 500? Or what did I say? 100. I can't even remember what I said. So what do you think? So I'll leave that one with you. I think you'll all know the answer. Um, but obviously you want majority of people or as many people as you can liking and loving your content. You know, and the more people that you have on your page, you want to maximise that number, obviously. Okay, number eight. Um, engagement on shared posts is also a signal. So let's say you share something. Let's say you share this Facebook Live out. So rather than just um, sharing it, so a signal is the engagement on that share. So you share it, but then what happens with it from there, from you sharing it? So what I would recommend you do to increase the signal with this one is put the reason why you're sharing whatever it is that you're sharing. 
So if you're sharing this Facebook Live, and if you feel comfortable with that and you've got other people that are building their business online that you can tag them in this or share them, please do that because we want people to know how to maximize the Facebook algorithm. So when people are on social media, you maximize your efforts and you're not wasting your time. So please share this out if you think it's helpful to people. But if you do share it out, then not only click the share button or let's say it's even a YouTube clip and you're sharing it because you thought it was powerful, then say that. Say that at the top, write something at the top. Don't just share something for the sake of sharing something. Say something at the top like, um, I found this video really impactful for whatever reason and just have some wording at the top when you're sharing content. And um, don't overshare. Leaders don't overshare other people's content. They create their own. So if you want to be a leader, if you want to be a power, if you want to be powerful, if you want to be an influencer and you want to build yourself as an authority and have credibility on social media and the internet, then create your own content. So I'm not saying don't share, definitely share. Share other people's valuable content. Share Facebook lives like this. Share blog posts. Just don't overshare because your branding is all about you. It's not about other people's content all the time. It's about you. So definitely share, just don't overshare because that's not a sign of a good leader or somebody who's got a lot of authority and a credibility. So good, just don't overdo it. Okay, and number nine, value. What is your content about? Is it valuable content? So what you're being measured against with one of the with the ninth signal is is your val is your content valuable? Is it congruent with your target market? Is it um, you know beneficial to the people that are on your page? Value, 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 value. If you're just putting crap on your Facebook page, it's not congruent to your target market. You're just sharing stuff for the sake of sharing with no content. Nobody's engaging with you. It's not valuable. I've said this before, all Facebook cares about is that the end user has a valuable, enjoyable experience. So concentrate on either education or entertainment. So it's something that's really valuable, educational, where somebody can learn something from what you're saying and the content that you're giving, or it's entertainment, like you're out, you're fun, you're traveling, you're doing something like that's entertainment. So concentrate on those two things really with your content. Is it um, you know, educational or is it good entertainment? Is it valuable to your target market and your audience? And that is the signal that you're being measured against. So if the content that's going on your page, and this is where spamming pictures of your product products or I'm in a new business, come join me, PM me, you know, just spamming people about your business opportunity or the products and you've got pictures of your products and there's a special of the day or the week or the month or whatever, PM me if you want to buy. That's not valuable to people. That's I've got something to sell, buy me and message me if you want some. <laughs> now, some of you that are doing that on your personal Facebook page, you may get results from that. But it'll be in a minor way. If you truly want to build a valuable business and a big business, a home-based business, so you can have the freedom that you want to have in the future and the discretionary income to do what you want to do in your life and your family, doing that kind of thing is not valuable to your target market. Facebook will not share that out organically to lots of people because it's not valuable. So when you choose value over that, then that's when the signal will be fired, the more valuable content that you can put at put out then organically it'll be shared you know to more people so they're the nine signals that you need to be aware of and to do more of or less of depending on what signal it was now the last thing with the so the isp the inventory the signals the nine signals i just talked about then the the, th the last one is prediction so this is where facebook is already unbeknownst to you it's already predicting in some ways how it's going to send out you know your content in the future by you know what you've done in the past, how people are engaging with you with those nine signals, as to you know here and now, they know the difference between somebody who's got valuable content and somebody that doesn't. So there'll be people sitting there that are growing really fast, and they're getting lots of likes and lots of followers and lots of engagement, and their stuff is going out to thousands of people versus you that might not that's doing it really slowly and you're not getting many likes and you're not getting many followers and you're not getting much engagement it's because of those nine signals so it's all facebook's already predicting the level of organic reach that they're going to give you you know 
depending on those nine signals that we just talked about. So what you want to achieve is to increase your predictability of exposure, maximize your opportunity to get more likes, get more engagement, get more followers, get more people, you know, putting their email address into something if you've got something to offer. And when you get more leads, you get more sales. So it's really important for the future of your organic reach to be very mindful of the inventory that you've done in the past and more importantly, those nine signals that I just talked about. Now, I'm just going to check my notes. Um, yeah, so it's really about the two things that I would concentrate on, my, on the most with the nine signals is that you are consistent in what you do and you're always at the forefront of your mind. Value, 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 value. When you get, give value, you'll get more engagement. And I've said this many times before, if you want to earn more money, become more valuable in the marketplace to your target market. So value, 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 value is, is, is very, very important. So if you, you know, truly want to build a really good business through Facebook, you want to increase your visibility. When you increase your visibility, you increase your, um, you know, authority. When you increase your authority, you increase your credibility in the marketplace. When you increase your credibility, people learn to know, like, and trust you. When people know, like, and trust you, they will give you their email address. They, they will, you know, get the value out of the content that you have to provide. And when you do that, you will earn more money because you've become valuable. You've become an authority. You've given more credibility. So it's all about being consistent and giving value. If you concentrate on those two things moving forward, you can ride the wave with Facebook algorithm changes. Facebook is always going to change. And when it makes major changes, people majorly panic. But if you always con consistently give value, be very congruent with your target market and not try to talk to everybody, but consistent value all the time, striving for engagement, concentrating on those nine signals that I just spoke about before to increase your organic reach, then you'll achieve that visibility, authority, credibility, you know, no like and trust factor, then you'll get more leads, then you'll get more sales. It's just, you know, it's just how it works. So you can ride the wave with any changes of the Facebook algorithm if you consistently give value and, you know, the word consistently being the main word there. So consistently doing it, but consistently giving value. So how was that? Did you get some value <laughs> out of that content? If you've got some value out of that content, just put the word value down below, please. Um, Christina, thank you so much. Good information. Great. Brenda. Hey, Brenda. How are you? Good info here. Thank you. Um, awesome. Thank you for your comments. I really appreciate um, your feedback. The last thing we really want anybody to do is spend hours and hours and hours on social media trying to build a business, but the Facebook algorithm is working against you. So, you know, your efforts are wasted. You need to be aware of this kind of content. Um, you know, thanks for your feedback, um, Glenn and Christina. Aware of how to work the Facebook algorithm in your favor. Um, so, you know, those nine signal points are really important for you to be aware of to maximize, you know, your organic reach on Facebook, okay? You can always throw a few dollars and boost posts and do Facebook ab advertising, and that's really where you can get maximum value out of, um, you know, Facebook. But I'm talking about sort of organic reach here, and that's really what you want to maximize so it doesn't cost you a lot of money. So once again, if you know not very little about attraction marketing and building your business online, properly put the word training down below if you're sick of looking at you know free training and you're happy to invest a few small dollars into a little ebook which is the actual formula for attraction marketing and then I can put you into my private Facebook group and teach you how to implement the formula in your business because that's half the battle you can get an ebook which says oh this is the formula but then you've got no idea how to implement it so that's what I'm here for to, to help you to do that for free in my private Facebook group so a couple of options for you there if you truly want to build a powerful business online. So those of you that are hung around, this has been a little bit longer. Thank you for sticking with me live. You're amazing. Um, you know, I just, I really, really value anybody that turns up on my Facebook lives and definitely sticks around to the end. So bless you. And anybody that catches the replay, thank you for watching. And I know I'm not jumping on tomorrow because I've got 
calls and strategy meetings and Zoom calls and all day long. So um, I will catch you in the very near future um, on my next Facebook Live. So have an awesome rest of the day, however much of the day you've got left, a lot or a little. Um, but thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. So thanks, guys. See you next time. Bye.